12 months ago, Jeremy Paxman let me preside over the university challenge Children Need Special as Team BBC beat Team ITV. Well, keen to avenge defeat, a rematch was arranged and I bribed Jeremy to let me do it again. So, this is University Challenge for Children in Need, Battle of the Broadcasters. Roll titles. Where is that barista with my coffee? Challenge Children in Need Special. Asking the questions, Kirsty Walk. Welcome to a special Children in Need edition of University Challenge, the show that pits the finest intellectual minds Britain has to offer against each other and Russell Kane. So, we're all here supporting BBC Children in Need. And even my croaky voice couldn't stop me being here. So, if you're able to support us too, we'd love for you to donate whatever you can while you enjoy the show. Tonight sees a rematch between the fiercest rivals this world has ever seen after the BBC's stunning victory over ITV last year. Let's take a look. In the 2007 television film, My Boy Jack. BBC Pemberton. Richard Kipling. <laughs> BBC O'Brien. At the Olympic Games. BBC Pemberton. I think it's Orinoco. <laughs> ITV Domit. Ibiza? No. Oh, yeah. BBC O'Brien. Is it Majorca? It is indeed Can Mallorca. you throw us another picture around? <laughs> oh. We asked Joel if he wanted to come back this year, but he didn't know the answer to that question either. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's meet the teams. Team ITV. I'm Russell Kane, a comedian, writer, presenter, and I've been to Ibiza 26 times, so I can remember nothing. I'm Denise Welsh. I'm an actor, TV presenter and Loose Women panellist. And I don't know about university, but this will certainly be a challenge. And their captain. My name is Kay Adams. I'm a journalist, broadcaster. I'm also a Loose Women panellist. And today we're discussing if you want to get out of a tricky situation, is it OK to say you need a wee? Sit down. <laughs> And I'm Dr. Ranj Singh. I'm an NHS doctor, a TV presenter and an author. And I'm here because someone said they needed a first aider. I'm Russell Kane, and I can't remember Russell. anything. <laughs> well, let's hear it for Team ITV. <laughs> and let's see who they're up against. Team BBC. Hello, I'm Angela Barnes, stand-up comedian and panel show botherer. And I did not know Kirsty Walk had taken over hosting Mop the Week. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not Hugh Dennis. No, I'm Michelle Hussein, journalist. <laughs> And BBC News Reader, which means my main skill is having a certain look in the eye and being able to shuffle my papers really well. And their captain. Hello, I'm Rick Edwards, an author and broadcaster, and I'm here because the last time I was on University Challenge, I lost, and I figured there was never going to be a better chance of getting a win than against this team from ITV. <laughs> I'm John Coleshaw, comedian, impersonator, voice actor with Dead Ringers, or Dead Ringers, as Tom Baker would say, and I've travelled 35 minutes into the future, and oh, what an awesome episode this was. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to you all, but first of all, Dr Ranj, I mean, it is so nice of you to join us, and we're absolutely amazed that you're here in person, because we thought that we'd just get a telephone number to call, and you promised <laughs> us to get... <laughs> <laughs> and you are apparently a real doctor. So, really, <laughs> how do you find the time to keep your general knowledge up? It's really easy, because I have none. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a great game, guys. So, OK. I mean, this is your University Challenge debut. You must be incredibly proud. Oh, incredibly proud. I remember watching when I was a student. I think we've got a university photo. And I'm, I'm just uh, wondering, oh. who, who are we channelling here? It was my Rod Stewart mullet. What do you think? <laughs> and the one earring. Did you see the, the one, one earring? earring. Yeah. That was a yeah. statement. Look at that. Yeah. I might have handed him a homework on time, but earring. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the system. I'll show them what's what. <laughs> Denise, welcome. I mean, we wait ages for one loose woman. We've got two loose women on the yes. panel. I know. Tell me, what kind of student were you? I loved school. I loved hanging around on the radiators to see which boy I fancied walk past. That was basically my, um, my, 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 my school years. So I'm, you know, I'm, that's why I said yes to <laughs> university challenge. <laughs> 
Russell, did you ever think that you were going to be on University Challenge? Uh, being brutally honest, more than that, I was on my university's team, the untelevised heats. So you say. We, did, we didn't get through um, because we were a former polytechnic and the questions are quite elitist. We needed more that were for us, like, you know, what is Channel 162 on a sky remote? Bang, Animal Planet. <laughs> um, so we, we got absolutely thrashed. On that. Well, thank you very much into the insights from uh, the ITV team. Now, BBC, you know what you're up against. Angela, you studied linguistics at Sussex. Is that going to be a help? I doubt it, Kirsty. It didn't help me get a job, and that was the one thing it was meant to do, so I don't see how it's going to help me in a quiz. <laughs> Are you happy with the team as you look at it? I am so happy to be on Team BBC, and I'll tell you why. Because when I was 10, my friend at school, her mum wouldn't let her play at my house because she described us as being a bit ITV. So, oh. up yours, Carol. I'm on Team oh BBC. <laughs> you could be cancelled for that, Barnes. <laughs> Well, Michelle, you are the real deal. You went to uh, Cambridge. You're an award-winning journalist, a BBC newsreader. Presume this is a doddle. I, I feel it can only go downhill from an introduction like that, Kirsty. You wrote a book called The Skills, How to Get Ahead at Work. <laughs> so has that prepared you? I wrote about things like authority and presence, and I'm now realising all of it is crumbling and none of it is going to work on you or against <laughs> these questions, so frankly... You're damn right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Rick, I just have to say that you are the real deal. Because you, you actually have I was been... the real deal. No, no. Yeah. No, no. It's me. It's, it's you. Because you're no stranger to being a contestant because you actually have been on University Challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't particularly want to go into any detail. If only we had a clip. Oh, no. wait a minute. Oh, yes, I think we do. Oh, great. Let's take a look. 85 is not a bad score. It's not a good score, is it, Jeremy? No, it's not. It's a pretty pretty useless school, really, but yeah. I was just trying to be nice to you. Well, thank you, thank you for But that. we weren't bothered. It felt empty to me. <laughs> it was a bit empty, but you had some, you had some good answers, I think. Just patronising and hollow. <laughs> just, just say it how it is, Jeremy. You were disgusted with us, we were disgusted with ourselves, and leave it at that. <laughs> John Colshaw, uh, welcome to University Challenge. Lovely to be here. If you were to choose a celebrity be on your team tonight, who would it be? I, I hope that, uh, Russell Kane, you will defect to our team, uh, because we love those caning it videos that you do. We pick apart the logic of life you. and shine a light on the absurdity and you. point it out for us to feel much, much better. Well, with lots of not accurate, so. Cards so. In front of a Bedroom, not, not accurate. Right. Not, not accurate. <laughs> Don't clap. So, I believe you know our very own Roger Tilling, the man hey. of University Challenge. Yes, exactly. Roger Tilling. He's like the Britain's Got Talent announcer, but with A levels. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a go, both of you, at telling where people should donate their money to for children in need. After you, Governor. To donate, go to bbc.co.uk slash Budsy. And this is why Peter Dixon couldn't do it. <laughs> to donate, go to W. W. <laughs> W.bbc.co.uk forward slash Pudsey. Oh. Thank you very much to Team BBC. Good luck to you all. And just in case pride and bragging rights weren't enough, this year there's a prize. In the form of this special Pudsey Bear University Challenge trophy. <laughs> OK, without further ado, it's time to quiz. And here we go. It's ITV versus BBC for the rematch for children in need. Fingers on buzzers, your start is for ten. Meanings of what four-letter word include the excrement of an earthworm, a rigid casing immobilising a broken bone? Uh, Team BBC Barnes. Cast. Cast is the correct answer. Yeah. Very, well, very well interrupted. Your bonus questions are all on taglines from films which feature an animal in their title. <laughs> Firstly, which 1986 horror film, which shares its name with the biological genus Muska, had the tagline, Be afraid, be very afraid? Jaws. Jaws. Is it Jaws? Yeah, isn't, isn't that about being afraid to go in the water? Oh, the fly. It's the fly? Maybe? Yeah, the, the fly the sounds. Fly. The fly. Oh, I don't I think know. It's a, I think it's a Cronenberg. Can I have your yeah. answer? Uh, we'll go, the, the fly? The fly is the right answer. Yes. Oh. Next question. Which film released in 2000 featured an animal known by an omelie as Gallus Gallus had the tagline, Escape or Die Frying? 
escape with two thousand some kind of film about a fish or um, the anime. Absolutely an no escape idea. or die frying. Obviously, um, mm. um, well, in Gallus Gallus, Gallus. die frying. Ah, uh, Terry, you. Yeah, I know you've got to, but also, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think are we going to? I think we've passed it. I mean, I've got nothing. Try Finding Nemo. I yeah, we'll try it. Finding Nemo, even though it wasn't out then. The answer is Chicken Run. Oh! Ow. Oh. 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 Thirdly, which film, based on a best-selling 1974 novel, featured a large animatronic Ella Smobranch and the tagline, you'll never go into the water again? Jaws. 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 Jaws? Jaws is the correct answer. Very well done, Team BBC. <laughs> We're going to start of our first picture round. For your picture starter, you will see a photo of a news reporter who covered the recent fuel shortages and was described on social media as the best man for the job. For 10 points, simply give me his name. Team ITV Adams. Phil McCann. Phil McCann is the correct answer. Your picture round bonus points coming up now. Three more figures whose names are an example of what is sometimes called nominative determinism. First, for five points, what is the surname of this celebrity chef and proprietor of the Scran and Scally gastropub in Edinburgh? Mm -hmm. OK, the, the guy's called Tom, Tom Kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah. Are we all happy with that? Yeah. 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 Tom Kitchen. Yeah. Tom, Kitchen. Yeah. Tom Kitchen. It is Tom Kitchen. Secondly, a synonym for Whiteout, what's the surname of this BBC East Midlands weather presenter? Blizzard. Do you know it's Blizzard, or are you guessing it because it's synonym? I, I'm pretty sure it's Blizzard, but I don't know what her first name is. We don't. We only we don't need to know what. Oh, there you go. Okay, Blizzard. <laughs> You're going Blizzard? Yes. It's Sarah okay. Blizzard. Yeah, we got yeah. it. Next, phonetically similar to a defensive instruction you might hear one player give another on a football pitch, what's the full name of this Belgian defender who once played for Anderlecht? Right, a defensive instruction. Come on, come on, shout it, shout it. What, what, to defend defense. is to mark someone, isn't it? Would it mark mark yeah. them or something like that? To, yeah. um, uh, what, what do players shout at each other? Man on. It's man on. What do they sh Man on is French, isn't it? I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop you if yeah. you don't know it. No. We're going to say Mark Manon. <laughs> it's Mark de Man. Mark de Man. Oh. Oh. OK, here we go. Next one. <laughs> Starter for 10. Calcium salts, petroleum jelly, and long-chain aliphatic acids were among the original constituents of what modelling material developed in the late 19th century? Team ITV Sing. Plastic. Is not right. I'm afraid you lose five points. Oh, oh no! Take your time. I'm handing Team BBC over. Bonds. Plasticine. Plasticine. It's correct. Yes. Oh! <laughs> Love it. So, here we go, BBC. Your bonuses are in cakes and tarts. Oh, yeah. In each case, identify the item of confectionery from the description of the city or town. Ugh. A market town on the River Wye in Derbyshire. Bakewell Tart. It's going to be Bakewell Tart. Don't, please. Bakewell. 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 Bakewell Tart, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, Bakewell Tart. Is the correct answer. Yeah. A town in Salford on the former Liverpool yeah. and Eccles Manchester Eccles. Railway. Yeah. Uh, Eccles, as in Eccles cake. Is the correct answer. Finally, the Scottish city of the Firth of Tay that is about 60 miles from Edinburgh and 80 miles Dundee. from Glasgow. Dundee. Mm -hmm. But Dundee cake. Dundee. Dundee what? Cake. cake. Dundee cake. It is very well done. <laughs> You've given them the easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> You've given them the easy ones. No help, Kay. Talking of cakes, doing a bake sale is just one of the many ways you can raise money for children in need, which is, of course, the reason we're all here this evening. This next film is just one of a thousand ways that your donations help to save lives. This is Pippa's story. Pippa is the sassiest, most courageous, unstoppable little girl you will ever meet. She's just wonderful. On some days, Pippa's just like any other five-year-old. On other days, even the simplest of tasks is difficult and painful. Pippa has a rare genetic skin disorder called epidermolysis bullosa. She was diagnosed with EB shortly after birth. Pippa was born with very little skin on her hands and feet, so it was very evident straight away that something wasn't quite right. We were told she might never walk. Chances are we'd be lucky if we have a teenage daughter. 
Because her condition is so rare, the hospital didn't really know what was going on to start with. It took 10 days from that point for them to give us a diagnosis of epidermolysis bullosa. We're there with this tiny baby, very, very pale. She had these huge open wounds all over her body. We had to dress her, so we had to make little boots for her, special dressings. It was really stressful and really, really difficult. Pippa's condition causes blisters all over her skin, inside her ears, up her nose, her eyelids, inside her mouth, every part of her body that contains skin, her scalp to her toenails. From holding her hand, from wearing clothes, walking, brushing her teeth, washing her face, combing her hair, everything will cause a blister if you're not extremely careful. We can have anything on a good day from 20 to 30 blisters to a bad day where we've got maybe 200. Two seconds. A daily routine of balms and oxygen baths brings some relief to Pippa and reduces the chance of infection. Treatment is more damage control than um, treatment. Things like wearing all her clothes inside out, minimising her amount of walking and what she does when she's out of the house. It hurts when my blisters are done. EB regularly reduces Pippa to tears. She takes morphine for the pain. She can't get out of bed some days without having paracetamol. As a mum, as a parent, it's really hard to see your child in that amount of pain. You don't want to hear that from a child. The only guarantee is tomorrow Pippa will have blisters. There's no hope for change at the minute, so there is nothing we can do to take it away. Pippa's manual wheelchair will cause blisters on her hands. It means that if she's in school, she can't chase around with her friends. That makes Pippa feel very left out. Not being able to get somewhere or not being able to access something is very, very difficult for a child. It is heartbreaking to see that. But Pippa has been given a lifeline, a new state-of-the-art wheelchair which has given her some real independence and opened up the world of the great outdoors. To go it. Thanks to charity New Life, which receives funding from children in need, young people like Pippa can have their lives transformed by specialist equipment that families might otherwise be unable to afford. Pippa calls her wheelchair Tiger Tracks because it's orange and we've decorated it with tiger stripes. It doesn't really look like a wheelchair. It goes extremely fast, which for a five-year-old is always a great thing. I like playing with tracks because um, it goes super fast. She can do 360 spins, she can go through puddles, she can go off road, she can go on sand, over mud, through the woods. The tiny tracks has given Pippa and us as a family a lot more freedom. When we see all of the kids, her friends, that a lot of them are envious that she has this wheelchair that it is fun to drive, so it makes her feel that being different can be a positive as well. Tracks is a good wheelchair. For Pippa, Tiny Tracks really has been life-changing. Specialist equipment like Pippa's chair can revolutionise the lives of young people who are in pain and whose conditions exclude them from large parts of everyday life that most of us would take for granted. And although Pippa's life has been transformed, there are many other young people whose lives are still on hold. And you can help change that right now all you have to do is go online or send a text. To donate 5, 10, 20 or 30 pounds, text the word 5, 10, 20 or 30 to 70701. Texts will cost your donation plus your standard network message charge and 100% of your donation will go to BBC Children in Need. You must be 16 or over and have the bill payer's permission. For full terms and conditions, more information or to donate online, visit bbc.co.uk forward slash pudsey. Thanks very much. We're right on now with the quiz and it's a new starter for 10. Identify the author who wrote these words. Today you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who's you are than you. TBBC Arms. A.A. Mill. I'm afraid that is incorrect. <sighs> you lose five points.
I will carry on. He's also famous for his seminal work, The Cat in the Hat. Uh, Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss is the correct answer. Your bonus questions are in the language of the hit TV show, Love Island. Oh, God. Oh, I'm there, I'm there. What short word is often used by Islanders as an insult to describe someone who's fallen for someone and gone soft? Mercury, the element, does this at about minus 39 degrees Celsius. Melt. 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 I'm sorry, I'm from Essex, it's dialect. <laughs> What is your answer? It's melt. melt. It is melt indeed. Yes. Next one. What Ready? word is used by islanders to describe someone who is physically attractive? On an Excel spreadsheet, this is represented by an A to Z icon. Is it funny flutters? No, no. not on an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> How excited are you about your accounts? <laughs> what about fit? Just go fit. 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 It's not fit, no. it is sort. Sword. Oh. Finally. Damn. Often followed by the word off, what word is used by islanders to refer to the act of being dumped? This word shares the same spelling as the French word for foot. Uh, pied. 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 Off. Pied. Off. pied oh, off. Yes, well done. Pied. Yeah, pied. Is the correct answer. Seriously, don't bother. It's patronising. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's get on with the quizzing. They're starter for ten. Which enduring fictional character was originally named of the author of a definitive field guide to first... Team BBC Hussain. James Bond. James Bond is the correct answer. Very good interruption. <laughs> Let's go on to your bonus questions. And these are on fears and phobias. <laughs> Which character famously suffers from garascophobia and was created by Scottish novelist J.M. Barry? Peter Pan, is that a fear of growing old? You must be, you're right. Could be. Yeah. Well, J.M. Barry, Peter Pan, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. yeah, Peter Pan? Exactly. Coulrophobia is an extreme fear of what traditional figures. Oh, I thought... An example is Pennywise yeah, and Stephen King's It. Clowns. Uh, clowns. Clowns is the correct answer. <laughs> Anatidophobia refers to what common water bird? This jocular phobia originated as a joke made by Gary Larson in his enduring cartoon series, The Far Side, as the fear that somewhere out there, this bird may be watching you. Duck. Duck on. Duck. Is it duck? Duck. It might be. Maybe Is it duck. duck watching or a swan or an albatross? I don't know, I'm just thinking of a aquatic bird. Duck sort of pops into my mind. Should we go duck? Go on then, yeah. Go ducks. You're going ducks? Yeah. That's a really good answer and a very good round. Very well hey. done. <laughs> Next picture round. Take a look at the following picture. The women are from the nuclear research lab CERN and are forming a joke band called Les Horribles Cernet. But what is so significant about how this image was used by Tim Berners-Lee in 1992? Tim, ITV came. It was the first image on the internet. Correct. Very well interrupted. <laughs> it is actually the first picture of anything that's not strictly related to physics posted in the World Wide Web. Yes. Your bonuses are more pictures and it's celebrity art by people who've presented shows on the BBC or ITV. Born in Yorkshire, which comedian and member of a surrealist double act painted this linnet? And I'm going to accept their stage or given name. Well... Or Mortimer and I, Vic Reeves, isn't it? I go um, Vic Reeves Vic then, Reeves. Yeah, maybe. Um, Jim, Vic. Jim. Vic Reeves, go Vic Reeves. Yeah. Vic Reeves. Vic Reeves is the correct answer, oh. and of course his name is Jim Moore. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> well, I'd just like to say at this stage, you're doing a hell of a lot better than your lot did last year. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't say Damned much. Damned with faint praise. Damned with faint praise. Born in Birmingham and educated at the University of Manchester, which comedian painted this piece entitled Boris Johnson on an Egg? Born Joe likes it. In Birmingham. It's Joe. Isn't it? It's got to be. Could be, yeah. That's, I can't think of any I love other. Joe, that's yeah. him. Well, it's modern, obviously, Boris. if it's Boris. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah Joe Lysett. The answer is Joe Lysett. And the answer is Joe Lysett. Very good. Well done. <laughs> well done. Which comedian with an alliterative stage name, known for his offbeat comedy programs, painted this surreal <laughs> dystopia <laughs> featuring this morning's Philip Schofield? An Which comedian with an alliterative an stage, stage name? Stage. Harry Hill. Harry Hill. Harry does a lot of art and, and paints a lot of art and exhibits art as well. Harry Hill. Harry Hill's correct, and the painting is called Schofield's Dream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, very well 
Well done, ITV. Let's see how you are on a music round. Now, everybody, you will hear an extract from a song that reached number one in the UK charts earlier this year. Simply name the song. Da -da 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 Team BBC Bonds. Well, a man. Well, a man. Very well interrupted. Yes, it is indeed well, a man. Sea <laughs> shanty. <laughs> okay, your bonuses are on BBC and ITV stars who've released covers of songs, so help me. <laughs> In each case, I'm looking for the name of the singer. Look at the stars, look how they shine for you. Jodie Whittaker, it's Jodie Whittaker. And everything you do. Jodie Whittaker? Jodie Whittaker is correct. <laughs> Next up. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. Look at this Who sings the love song as we stroll along? I'm trying, Alexander, but I don't think it does sound. Any other thoughts I've ever heard? But he, he sort of feels like the kind of thing he might cover. Yeah. It doesn't sound like him, which isn't English. I've, I've not got a better idea, Ness. Um, well, we don't think it sounds like him, but we're going to say Alexander Armstrong. It doesn't sound like him, and it isn't Alexander Yeah, that's what we thought, good. <laughs> it is Chris Kamara. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Wow. Here's your final music bonus question. David Tennant. It is indeed David Tennant singing Sunshine on Leaf. <laughs> Very well done. So, new starter for ten. Upon his death in 1982, the Polish pianist Andrzej Tchaikovsky left what object to the Royal Shakespeare Company for use as a prop in Hamlet? Team BBC Coleshaw. A skull. A skull is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus questions on reviews. According to a 2016 review, which broadcaster, quote, addresses the camera as if he's trying to order dinner in the world's noisiest restaurant. He got this job because undiluted joy for railways radiates from his very being. Michael Portillo. Koshal? Michael Portillo. <laughs> Is Michael Portillo. <laughs> Next one. Concerning a performance on Strictly Come Dancing, which political figure did a reviewer describe as a man who learns a dance as if he were Hermione Granger facing expulsion from Hogwarts, and performs it with a level of commitment matched only by a boa constrictor swallowing the last gerbil left on Earth. It must be Ed Balls. He's the only politician yeah, I can think yeah. of that... Yeah. Uh, Ed Balls? Correct. What was the Daily Mirror reviewing in 1960 when they wrote? The programme is doomed from the outset, for there is little reality in this new serial, which apparently we have to suffer twice a week. Coronation, Coronation Street. Street. Coronation Street. Coronation Street. Uh, Coronation Street. Is the correct answer, Coronation. Very well done, Team BBC. <laughs> that sound means it's the end of the match and the final scores. And the winners are... the BBC. <laughs> what are you going to do to celebrate tonight? Just go and study our books, I think. Yeah. 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 Square. We're up for next year. We're just square guys. Yeah. You're just square guys, just going to go back to studying? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Ready for next year. It's working yeah. for us. Good. Yeah. And you are the undisputed losers <laughs> for this Thank second you. year. Well, Thank you. Better than Joel Domit, and that's all that matters. <laughs> so, what do you think? So, went the questions wrong? were wrong. But because it's for fun, we'll just let it slide. <laughs> the questions were wrong. A bad workman always brings his tools. Yeah, and, you're, and you're the tool. <laughs> Thank you for watching University Challenge on BBC Two, ITV Nil. A children need specials, so it's goodbye from Team BBC, <laughs> and it's goodbye from Team ITV. <laughs> and for me, for now, good night.